Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, I want to show you another way you can deploy a web app, specifically a Flask app, as a Docker container to Heroku. I have open here in VS Code kind of the game plan that I've been going through in this video series about how you can deploy a Flask app to Heroku. So just to recap, in a previous video, I showed you how you could deploy the app directly on the Ubuntu stack by defining a proc file and a requirements.txt. Here's the proc file. Here's requirements.txt. And then in the most recent video, I showed you how you could deploy the app as a Docker container on a container stack by defining a Docker file. Here's the Docker file. Specifically, I showed you what I call approach 2A, which is using the Docker file to build a Docker image locally and then push the Docker image to Heroku's container registry. Now, I wanna show you 2B. So we're gonna use the same Docker file. Okay, I'll show it one more time right here. And we're going to define a heroku.yaml file. We will push the heroku.yaml file, the Docker file in all of our apps dependencies or files to Heroku via a Git remote, a Git remote repository. And Heroku is going to look at our Heroku.yaml file and see, okay, how do you build your app? How do you deploy your project? It's gonna see that our project is a Docker container that is specified via an image by the Docker file. And it's going to build the image, register it, and deploy our app. So let's see to B. If you go to the documentation on Heroku's site, you'll see that currently they have two official ways for you to deploy your app with Docker. 2A is the container registry approach by deploying pre-built Docker images. And 2B, what we're about to do, is building your Docker images with Heroku.yaml for our deployment to Heroku. So you can take a look at this documentation because this is what I'm about to show you how to do for a simple Flask app. First, we need to declare a heroku.yaml file. For the heroku.yaml file, we're going to specify that to build our app, we're gonna have a Docker container, which is of process type web, and the Docker container is defined by a Docker image specified in the Docker file. We're not going to have a run command because our Docker file has what's called an entry point, and the entry point defines how the Docker container should execute at runtime. There's a little note here in the documentation about this. It says, if you don't include a run section, Heroku uses the command specified in the Docker file. And we're not using a CMD. We could have, but instead we're using entry point. I'll show that here. If you want to read about the differences between uh, the command and entry point specifications in a Docker file, I would refer you to the Docker documentation. All right, so like I said, we're not gonna need a run command because of that entry point. So I'm simply gonna copy uh, these three lines, make a heroku.yaml file in my project and paste the three lines. Save it and we're done with our heroku.yaml file. Our goal then is to push the contents of this entire directory, including the heroku.yaml file and including the Docker file to a Git repository on Heroku. On push, Heroku is going to take a look at the YAML file, follow the instructions here, build a Docker image using their compute resources, and then deploy the image as a container. And our app should be good to go. So what do we have next to do? Define a Heroku.yaml, check. Next, push our source code to Heroku's Git. That's our next step. And if you're looking at the documentation, you can see uh, we're gonna be on step number two. Okay, we need to make a commit with a heroku.yaml. Then we're gonna need to create a Heroku app. That is a step that's not listed here. It assumes that you've already created the app. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so I've made a commit. Now, 
I want to push this commit to a Heroku remote master branch. Okay, what's not listed here, uh, it assumes you've already done this, is you need to run Heroku create in this directory, this one right here, in order to have Heroku, the CLI, Heroku CLI, automatically add a remote for your app on Heroku. Okay, then we'll be able to simply use that remote name Heroku and we'll be able to push this commit to that remote master branch. All right, so let's head over to Heroku. I'm going to delete the app that I made in a previous video for approach 2A. That way we can start from scratch. All right, the app is gone. Okay, I could programmatically uh, make a new app from CLI, or I could use the GUI in the web interface and make a new app right here, like I did in a previous video. We'll do it from CLI. All right, so Heroku create, and then we put the name of the app we wanna create. I'll use the same name, interview app Gina. Okay, you should put some identifying term in here instead of my name, maybe put your name. Awesome. Okay, it says creating the app, done, and then it gives you two URLs. The first one is for the web app. Okay, so when we're deployed, we'll go to this URL to test it and make sure that it's working. And then the second one you can see is a URL to git.heroku.com. So this is a URL for a remote Git repo. If I do git remote dash V to see a listing of all of the remotes that I have for this Git repo, we'll see that this command here, Heroku create, as I said before, is going to add a remote called Heroku to our local Git repo. So this URL right here matches this URL right here for fetch and for push. Great, so back to the documentation. Okay. Let's set the stack of our app to be container. By default, it is the Ubuntu stack. You can see this, let me refresh here. You can see this here, interview app dash Gina, Heroku dash 20. So by default, this is the 20.04 Ubuntu stack. We need to programmatically change that to be a container stack as the documentation is telling us to do here for step three. And then now that we have our Heroku remote, We'll push our app and see if it works. All right, this is gonna give us essentially build status output. Uh, you can see uh, right here, it says building web Docker file, step one of four. Uh, it is pulling our base image, which is that Continuum IO Anaconda 3 tag 2020 11 image. That'll take a little bit of time. So while this is essentially giving us a, a build status, I'll show you on Heroku how you can see the same thing from the GUI. So I'm gonna click on the interview app. Oh wait, actually, let me go back. Let me refresh this. And you can see that the stack changed from uh, the Heroku Ubuntu 20 stack to the container stack. That was that stack set command that we just did via the Heroku CLI. All right, let me click on this. You'll see latest activity, a preview of the activity for this app. You can also click on the activity tab to see this and it's saying build in progress today at 4.27 p.m. I'll click view build progress, and this is an opportunity to see the same output via the GUI that we can see at the same time from the CLI. So you can see it just finished step one, two, and three, and I can see the same thing uh, showing up over here. Looks like it just finished step four, so it's almost done. Uh, this is really exciting. We'll be able to test it out here shortly.
All right, it says build finished. So I'm gonna go back to activity and check the activity feed. I've got a green check mark, build succeeded, awesome. And then it says deploy just now. So I'm going to click open app. Okay, this is going to open that URL, the same one that I pointed out when we did the uh, Heroku, uh, Heroku create and then our app name, right? It gave us two URLs. One was for the remote Git repo and one was for the app itself. So this is gonna open up that URL. Just give it a little bit of time. The first time uh, it takes a little bit of time to load and then after that it should be good unless you're using what's called a free dyno, in which case the dyno goes to sleep uh, after 30 minutes of activity and once a request comes in, if it's asleep, it takes a little bit of time to wake it up. All right, here it is, interview app, gina.herokuapp.com is live. And we can and should test our predict endpoint. I could come up to the URL bar and do slash predict, question mark, and then put in my query string. But what will be much quicker is if I just use my little Python client script to test this. I was using this script in the previous video for the 2A approach, uh, deploying pre-built Docker images. So actually I don't even need to update anything because I deleted the app and then used the same app name here. So I'm just gonna run this and make sure that I get a prediction of true back. And it looks like I do. So our app is up and running. To recap, this was what I'm calling approach 2B, defining a heroku.yaml file, pushing our source code to Heroku's Git, and then having Heroku build the Docker image and register it based on our Docker file we defined in a previous video. One last thing I wanna note before I wrap up this video is in a video, a few videos ago, uh, I've got a video series going here for all these awesome ways to deploy a Flask app. We prepared our Flask app for deployment uh, with these settings right here. I just wanna remind you of them because they're easy to forget and they're often, I find the culprit for perhaps why your app doesn't load and you see like an error here and a prompt to take a look at the Heroku logs. All right, stay tuned for the next video if you're interested in what I'm calling uh, 2C, which is using a GitHub action so that instead of pushing to Heroku's Git, you can push to GitHub and that will trigger a build of your Docker image and a push of it to the registry for deployment. Thanks for watching.